Hello everyone, welcome to Clear IS. In this video, we will be discussing about draft policy on migrant labor. I am Ujwala Pulala, an educator at Clear IS. Firstly, introduction. The exodus of millions of migrants during the COVID-19 lockdown compelled the government to come up with a policy. So as we have all seen that during the COVID-19 lockdown, a lot of migrant labor returned to their native towns on foot. And when the government was asked regarding the number of such migrant labor, it had no answer. And hence the government decided to come up with a policy for creating a central database of the number of migrant laborers and also to consider proposals for their welfare. This policy was prepared by the Niti Ayo. A large number of officials and members of the civil society were part of a subgroup which helped in the drafting of this policy. Migration. So firstly, what is migration? It refers to the movement of the people from one place to another place for varied range of reasons. Push-pull factors contribute to the migration pattern. Push factors. So as the name itself indicates, these are the factors which are responsible to push a person to move from one place to another place. These refer to the negative factors related with the place of origin which push an individual to migrate into another place. So since these factors are responsible for letting a person move from one place to another place, they are considered to be negative factors. They can be occurrence of natural disasters, hunger, poor quality of life, lack of employment opportunities, etc. Pull factors. Again, as the name itself indicates, these are the factors which attract a person towards a place. They refer to the positive factors related with the place of destination which attract an individual to migrate into such a place. They can be better quality of life, availability of jobs, higher wages, educational opportunities, etc. In addition to these, for women, marriage has been considered as one of the major contributors of migration. Two approaches of policy design. The policy speaks about two approaches, handout approach and rights-based approach. In the case of handout approach, the government provides facilities to the migrant labor and they'll just act as the passive recipients of these facilities. Whereas in the case of rights-based approach, the government recognizes that these facilities are the rights of the migrant labor. So handout approach is a limited approach which involves providing more or less temporary economic or social aids to the migrant labor. Whereas the rights-based approach helps in enhancing the capability of the community. So this policy rejects the handout approach and opts the rights-based approach. Existing law. The act previously governing the issues related with the migrant workers was the Interstate Migrant Workers Act 1979. However, this law dealt with the laborers migrating through a contractor and not the independent migrants. This act was later subsumed under the Occupational Safety Health Working Conditions Code of 2020. Draft Policy This aims for providing a comprehensive policy for the welfare of migrants recognizing migration to be an integral part of development. So development is not always equal. There are always imbalances in the case of the development. So, migration will always be an integral part of this developmental process because people will always prefer to move to a place which can provide them with a better quality of life. The Ministry of Labor and Employment will act as the nodal agency for the implementation of policies and for convergence of activities. Policy Proposals So, what are the proposals made by this policy for the welfare of migrant labor? Creation of Migration Resource Centers and a National Labor Helpline. Migration corridors to be identified and labor officers from source state should be present in the destination state for the welfare of migrants. For example, we see a lot of migration taking place from the states like Uttar Pradesh and Bihar towards the more developed states like Maharashtra. So, such corridors where the migration rate is high must be identified. 
the push factors responsible for migration must be controlled and this task has been assigned to community building organizations the role of panchayats has been recognized so we have already seen the success of bottom top approach hence the role of panchayats has been recognized through this policy and they should strive for the development of pro development strategies for the migrant labor a central database of the migrants has to be created formation of a central database could help in filling the gaps between demand and supply as well as in targeting the social security schemes grievance redressal cells would be set up to deal with complaints regarding abuse at workplace and violations concerning minimum wages these cells are to be set up by national legal services authority that is nalsa and ministry of labor The Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs is to look after the issues regarding provision of night shelters and seasonal homes to migrants. The issues regarding the education of migrant children under the Right to Education Act are to be dealt by the Ministry of Education. And the task of skill development has been assigned to the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So along with the Ministry of Labor and Employment, other ministries like the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Skill Development and entrepreneurship should also play a role in the welfare of the migrant labor so this was a short video on the draft policy on migrant labor i hope you all liked it thank you and please subscribe to our channel clear is